Parents worried about children coming down with a rare but serious condition linked to COVID-19 cases can look for specific symptoms. Pediatrician Dr. Michael Wasserman joins us today with details of multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. First of all, thank you for being with us. And then right off the top, what is this? Well, it's, it's a, first of all, it's a rare condition that seems to follow a child having had a COVID infection. So this is, it's a, it's a work in progress. The name was just changed last week. Wow. So it's, re it's, it's really a work in progress and we're just learning about this. It's a rare complication and the symptoms are highly variable from one child to the next. It seems to be most common in children who are school aged so it's the five to 10 year old group, not so much the, the toddlers and such, or maybe even not so much the adolescents, but mainly in the elementary uh, school age children. Okay, let's and, talk about some of the characteristics because as a parent, the organ dysfunction really jumps out and terrifies you. Okay, well, there's, there's really three or four major criteria. Number one, there's fever, and it's fever that persists for three to four days. And typically this occurs uh, one to four weeks after you've had the COVID infection. Uh, so that's gonna be, uh, those are gonna be two major criteria. It's gonna be multi-organ. So you're gonna see two or more different parts of the body affected by this process. The heart, the brain, the lungs, the kidneys, oh, the gosh. skin, the eye tract. So it can be any combination of that. And that's why the disease may look different from one child to the next, because at least in part, it affects different parts of the body it's a blood vessel disease. So wherever blood vessels go in the body, that's and what those blood vessels that are impacted, that's where you're gonna see it, whether it's the skin, the heart, uh, and, and so forth. And then uh, there's blood work, there's lab work that shows inflammation that occurs in these children as this process is occurring. So this doesn't seem to be the virus itself that's making you sick, but actually it may be the body's immune system responding in the post-viral, the post-infection phase in sort of an odd or funny way. Right, the and immune system just kind of goes berserk. It just goes, and we're not sure why it goes, and it seems to maybe go a little differently in one patient to the next, so the treatment may vary from one child to the next. This has been seen in clusters in Northern Italy, in London, in New York, and yes, there have been cases here uh, in South Louisiana. I mean, uh, in the metro area, fortunately, it's rare. Uh, it's just being understood. If you go and read about this online, you're going to see that everything's been written about in the last two or three weeks, and there's really no good scientific literature to help understand this. That's where the testing and the research is going on as we speak. Uh, the cardiologists, the immunologists, the rheumatologists who these are people who look at immune, immunity and such. They, they are the people who are studying it and actually treating uh, this rare group of children. Yeah, you mentioned different treatments for different kids. Talk just a little bit more about those treatment options. Well, you can try to cut down the inflammation by using medicines like cortisone, things like that. Okay. You have to do the low blood pressure that these children oftentimes have when they present, when they're initially sick. And then you may try to uh, interrupt the immune response using blocking antibodies, other sort of blocking mechanisms. Imagine the immune system is this very complex series of uh, cascading events that occur. You could try to block it at different points in the process okay. with levels of success. And really that's where the research is going to go in terms of where's the process occur and then if we can find out where the process occurs then we can interrupt that that part of the uh, disease process and you did mention that this happened so many days after they had the coronavirus what if there sure. is this kids who are showing symptoms of the coronavirus or is there some asymptomatic cases there too this, this can be children who have positive testing for coronavirus or negative testing, but they've probably been around people with coronavirus. And you can see that these are the wide variety of symptoms, fever, rash, tummy ache, vomiting, headache. They can have this, uh, the tongue can look different. They can have injection, irritation, inflammation of the eyeball, the inner aspect of the eyelid and the eyeball itself. Uh, so really there's this whole array of symptoms, again, going back to what part of the body are the arteries, the small blood vessels that bring blood, that bring oxygen and blood out from the heart to those uh, uh, organs, what parts are being inflamed and irritated, and that's gonna, of course, affect how we see the child present. But these kids are gonna look different. 
to, to, to somebody who's been around children a lot, they're going to look sick. They're not going to look a little sick. They're going to be, if you're five feet away from them, they're going to look pretty dreadful, and they're going to look dreadful for hours, not for three minutes or ten minutes. But this is going to be a situation where you, the parents, are going to say, I don't know what's going on, so get the child to your pediatrician or to a pediatric emergency room. This is where that special knowledge and expertise of knowing about children can be helpful. Yeah, that is helpful that at least you, you know your child is sick because I was afraid I was going to miss the symptoms. My pediatrician said last week there's no way you could miss these. Dr. <laughs> Wasserman, thank you so very much for your expertise. We really appreciate it.